Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmosso at thewatchbox.com. Your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on any Watchbox platform. Email me directly for pricing, tmosso at thewatchbox.com. Today, we're discussing the latest generation Rolex Oyster Perpetual Datejust, reference 126234. Stainless steel with a white gold bezel. It features a Jubilee bracelet. This represents the smaller take on the popular dark rhodium Wimbledon dial. We'll throw this on my wrist of 16 centimeters and get a sense of how it wears. Zooming away from the baseboard a little bit to get a better sense. You can see in proportion, it is perfectly sized. Ideal for a wrist as small as 13 centimeters in circumference. This is a real unisex option. It's also for guys who want something that's a bit dressier while still maintaining Rolex sports watch durability. And it's also for those who prefer vintage styles, which tend to be a little bit more compact in size and elegant in proportion. As you can see, no issues side to side. The looks are nowhere near the edge of my wrist and the cuff shot showing it'll easily slide underneath the dress sleeve. Taking a quick look at the bracelet, let's remind ourselves that Rolex makes its dials, cases, bracelets, clasps, and movements. They also have their own foundry, which means they make their own steel and gold. They use 904L steel, which is a high nickel content steel that is highly anti-corrosive, resistant to many industrial acids as well as salt. So if exposed to seawater, this steel does not need to be rinsed. Rolex also makes its own gold, gray gold, an 18 karat white gold alloy that's white all the way through and never needs to be rhodium plated, unlike conventional white gold, which can be scratched through to a different colored material. Now you can see, we have a robust five-link Jubilee. The Jubilee has been part of the Datejust line since the first Datejust reference in 1945. That was the 40th anniversary of Rolex, or the Jubilee, and hence the bracelet was named accordingly. Now you can see this is a super Jubilee because the end links are solid and the center links are solid. So though it is a supple five link design with plenty of gaps to vent the wrist on a hot day, it's a lot closer to the physical integrity and strength of the three link Oyster Sports Bracelet than previous Jubilees. So you can absolutely consider this to be a sports bracelet. It's tough enough. Now we have a clasp internally polished that has a beak and a hook and you can see how they latch together. It's a lip lock system. You can't just pull it open. You actually have to unlock it. So there's a measure of security that is built in with that mechanism. You have the easy link system, five millimeters of in or out snap into place adjustment. You can also see that there are several divots drilled inside the clasp and those divots allow you to use a strap tool to change the anchoring point of the bracelet inside the clasp. That's one way to size it and fine tune. You also have many removable links fixed in place by screws. The case band is elegant and handsome. Rolex stamps its cases, but it doesn't stamp them all the same. The dress watches, the date justs, the date eights, the yacht masters, the Daytonas, they have considerably more elegant case profiles than dive watches, the Explorer 2s, and as you can see here, tapered lugs, full polish, graceful compound curved case flanks, all of that looks great. This is nothing like the dive watches and the GMTs. We have a screw down crown, twin lock, 100 meters of water resistance, a lovely and beautifully defined, fully intact and unpolished fluted bezel. And then the dial, we have those green lacquered radially arrayed Roman numerals with the watchmakers for they are green, they are lustrous, they are handsome, and they sit on a base of dark rhodium. There is a sunburst, a sunburst graining that explodes out from underneath the hands and that's what Rolex uses to get these dials dark gray metallic. You'll see this here, you'll see this on other Datejust models, the Yacht Masters. That's how they get that color. Rhodium is normally silvered, but Rolex uses a darker rhodium that looks more like ruthenium. The crown as well as the hands are made of white gold so that they will never tarnish or oxidize over time. Let me quickly turn out the light. We do have some loom for you. And you can see that even in the dark, that bezel is twinkling. Uh, very simple, minimalist, and of course, chromolite blue loom, Rolex's proprietary loom. So you have your 100 meter water resistant oyster case, and underneath that case back, you have Rolex caliber 3235, 70 hour power reserve, bi-directional winding. Big change from the 3135 is of course the extra power reserve up to 70, and the use of the Leica etched Chronergy escapement, which is basically Rolex's answer to Omega coaxial. There's also a rotor bearing used instead of the old jeweled staff, making this 31 joule movement more shock tolerant than the previous version. It beats away at 28,800 vibrations per hour, and it has 31 pivot joules. It is a COSC certified 
certified Swiss chronometer, but Rolex then cases up the certified movement and tests it in six positions to ensure it will run no worse than minus two plus two seconds per day, hence the nomenclature superlative chronometer. It uses Rolex's proprietary Paraflex shock protection system, and it has a full balance bridge with a free-sprung balance for precise adjustment and greater shock-resistant toughness. There is also a niobium zirconium blue oxidized hairspring that's highly anti-magnetic, and that handmade Breguet overcoil hairspring has centered mass that allows the watch to keep very even time regardless of physical position on your wrist or on the dresser at night. Reach out to tmasso at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details.